ever have one of those dreams that just sticks with you so vivid you could swear it really happened? Oh, absolutely. That's what we're diving into today. A dream called My Dream of the Girl. And what's even more interesting is we've got this dream, right? But then we've also got this proposed structure for turning it into a story. Like someone took this dream and saw a whole movie in it. Layering it like that. Exactly. It's fascinating. Yeah, we have the raw dream and then a way to maybe unpack what it could mean. Right. So, okay, let's dive into this dream. It starts at a house party, you know, lively, crowded, music's bumping. Yeah, I get the scene. But then we meet Keisha, and she's immediately different from everyone else there. The dream says she's got this long, unstyled hair, no makeup, and this is in contrast to all the other women in the party who are dressed up, made up, the whole nine yards. Yeah. What's fascinating here is how the dream makes Keisha stand out right away. Take a spotlight on her, yeah. Yeah, and her appearance, especially the long, unbound hair, you know, that can be a symbol of freedom, natural beauty. Some cultures even see it as a sign of spiritual strength. Absolutely. And the fact that she's the only one like that at this whole party it speaks volumes. Definitely. But then it gets even more interesting because suddenly the Messiah appears. Wow. Picture this, Keisha's navigating this crowded room, and out of nowhere, the Messiah walks right up to her. But instead of this big announcement, you know, like, here I am, he leans in, whispers something to her, almost like a secret in this crowded room. He tells her, pin your hair up, in your modesty lies your strength. Mm. That always sends chills down my spine when I read that, this really intimate moment amidst all that chaos. It makes you wonder, what is it about Keisha that draws this kind of direct guidance from the Messiah? Yeah, what do you think? What's your take on that? I think. And then the dream takes this really unsettling turn. Uh, oh, We're God. still in the same house, but everything feels different. Different how? It's like the whole mood is shifted. It's heavier, more oppressive. Like the air itself is thick with, I don't know, anticipation. Oh, I know that feeling in dreams, like something's about to go down. Exactly. And dreams often use those kinds of changes, those shifts in mood, to signal something important is about to happen. Yeah, like foreshadowing. Yes. So we're back in the dream, and Keisha's walking through the house. She's got her hair pinned up now, just like the Messiah told her to do. Okay. But she doesn't seem empowered. In anything, she seems anxious on edge, like she's being watched or tested or something. Yeah, interesting. It's like she's done this outward thing, you know, pinned her hair up. Right. But now something else is coming. Because that's just the beginning. Right. The external change is just the first step. It's what happens next that really matters. And what happens next is we're introduced to these two new characters, Tasha and Monique, and they're whispering, they're smirking. Oh, boy. And one of them is holding a pair of scissors. Scissors, oh, no. Scissors in a dream, those are never good. No, they're not. Because sharp objects, those often represent a kind of severing, you know? Hmm. Like something being taken away. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not just that they're cutting, it's how they're doing it. The whispering, the smirking. Yeah. It all feels very deliberate. So deliberate. Like they're trying to humiliate her. And this part always gets me because I remember a time when I felt that same kind of pressure, you know? to change something about myself, something fundamental, just to fit in. And let me tell you, it did not end well, just like it doesn't end well for Keisha. That happens. They surround her, these two women, and they start cutting off her hair. Oh, no. And they're laughing while they're doing it. Keisha's totally frozen. She can't even speak. And they're just chopping away at this part of her that represented her strength, her uniqueness. It's like they're trying to take away her power, her individuality. Yeah. Force her into their mold. Exactly. And the dream... Fast forwards a few weeks, we're in a different part of the house now, and it's like a full-blown, wild party. Loud music, dancing, people drinking. It's like a complete 180 from that tense atmosphere before. Totally. And guess who's at the party? Keisha. But what? she's completely different. She's dressed provocatively, wearing makeup, gossiping. It's like she's become one of them. Wow. So the question is, did she choose this mm. or is this a reaction to what happened to having her strength taken away? Right. It's like, is this her trying to fit in now? Yeah. And as if this whole thing couldn't get any weirder, the Messiah walks in. No way. Right into the party. Right into this crazy party. And it's like he sees everything. You know, he sees what's become of the house of Keisha. Yeah, it's like he's seeing the consequences. Exactly. And he spots Keisha across the room. But this time there's no whispered message, no guidance or anything. He just looks at her. And the dream says his eyes were filled with tears. Wow. And then he just turns and walks away. He doesn't say anything to her. Not a word. 
just tears and then gone. That's powerful. That's uh, silence. You know, sometimes silence speaks louder than words. It's heartbreaking, right? It's like he knows he can't force her onto a different path, even though he sees where this one's going to lead. And maybe that's the point, right? We all have to make our own choices. Yeah, and the dream shifts then to Keisha's point of view, and she's watching the Messiah leave. He's walking down the street, getting farther away, and as he does, this darkness starts to fall, this heavy darkness, like a blanket covering everything. Ooh, I don't like that. Me neither. So we end with this sense of, I don't know, like a warning almost. Totally. Like, this is what happens when we ignore that inner voice, that part of us that knows our own strength. When we let those external forces dictate who we become. Exactly. And it makes you think, right, how often do we do that in our own lives? Silence that inner voice because we're afraid to stand out, afraid to be different. Or because we think it's just easier to go along with the crowd. Right, because fitting in can seem so much easier in the moment. It can, but this dream is like this big flashing neon sign reminding us, don't, you know, don't lose yourself trying to fit in. Embrace your inner Keisha. Yes. Even, especially when it's hard, even when it feels like you're the only one, that's what makes you, you. And that is something worth fighting for. Okay. So that's our deep dive for today. Hope this got you thinking about your own Keisha moments and how you're navigating those choices, those influences in your life. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning.